in this class we will discuss about a problem on uh, finding the compressive load carrying capacity of a channel section which is used in a cold formed uh, steel structure using the uh, Indian codes that is IS 8.1 and IS 8.11 so I have explained uh, the usage of uh, British code uh, BS code in the earlier lectures now let us take uh, a problem of finding the load carrying capacity, compressive load carrying capacity uh, for a channel section using Indian code. Now I will take a section of this dimension 250 by 80 by 25 by 5 mm. So it is like this 250 is the total uh, depth of the sections, 80 is the width of flange, 25 is the uh, this width of the lip, uh, lip and uh, this 5 is the thickness. Okay. So it has got a uniform thickness. So this is the section he has given. Now we have to compute uh, the load carrying capacity of this uh, section, compressive load carrying capacity of this section. Of course, uh, here uh, he has not given the effective length of the column. So we will have, uh, we will find out uh, uh, the general, uh, <coughs> this, uh, this, this, uh, that, that is the general uh, procedure we will adopt uh, to find the load carrying capacity. Later on, we will see for different uh, effective lengths how the value compressive load value will change so already we know that as the effective uh, length of the column increases uh, so it becomes a long column and uh, the load carrying capacity will reduce so let us see how we can be solved so from is uh, level from the tables from the properties of the cold form steel sections uh, for this uh, given particular section so these are the properties we can write down, which, which can help you obtain from IS8 level. Overall cross section, cross cross section area is 2080 m square. So moment of inertia of this section about the horizontal centered on axis IXX is 1840 into 10 power 4 mm power 4. About the minor axis YY, IYY is 156 into 10 power 4 mm power 4. Minimum radius of generation or YY is uh, 27.39 mm. And in this problem, we have given yield stress value as 240 MPa and the exponent of the material of that is steel is 2 into 10 power 5 MPa. Now, anyway, in order to compute the uh, compressive load carrying capacity, we know that uh, it is nothing but uh, the product of uh, effective area and the actual stress that is going to develop in the uh, section. So, that means it is a product of. Uh, effective area and uh, actual stress. So we need to find these two things now, effective area and actual stress. First let us find out that uh, to find the effective area we need to find the effective width because it depends on the type of elements which is present in that uh, section. Now I consider to find the effective width now the effective width is denoted by B in IS code whereas uh, in, uh, in, the, in in if BS code it is uh, denoted as B effective. Now I will take the lip portion. So this is the lip portion. There are two lips here of length uh, 25 mm and of course uh, thickness uh, 5 mm. So they are treated as unstippled elements because only one side of this uh, supported for the conservative side. So the, uh, the here you know that uh, in this section the radius to the inner uh, circle is uh, 1.5 mm thickness that is uh, 5 into 1.55. Uh, 5 to 1.5 that is 7.5 mm and uh, <coughs> for the that is 7.5 becomes plus for the outer this thing another 5 we have to take that means this total from here to here it becomes 12.5 mm now the W by T ratio for this uh, lip portion is 25 mm is the overall uh, middle minus this we have to detect sir. so you will and divided by T is because is 5 you get 2.5. So if this ratio W by D is less than 12, then as per the code, we have to take the stress, conservative stress as uh, 0.6 times F1, which becomes uh, 0.6 into 240, that is 1.4 MBA. So this FC value uh, is important uh, uh, for us now. Now coming to the flanges. So now it is over. Now coming to the flange, there are two flanges. So if you refer page 6 of IS 801, so we have to use both the codes here, IS 801. So there is a in page number 6, uh, there is a relation 
which gives the ratio of b by c uh, in terms of jump like this. So we have to apply this. So now, yes, based on this equation, we have to calculate the effective weight. Here, b is the effective weight, c is the thickness, f is the uh, stress which is, we are going to make it as f is equal to fc here, which is 144. Now, in the code, of course, uh, here given uh, in page number 6, if you observe, b by t is equal to 2120 divided by root f. So instead of the 658, 2120 is there. And here, instead of uh, 145, you have uh, 465 there. Actually, the, that equation, whatever is given in the code, when f is expressed in kg per centimeter square, you have to note down that. When f is in kg per centimeter square, uh, that is the equation which is given in the code we have to use. But here, I am taking f in Newton per mm square. <coughs> so there is a relationship between kg per centimeter square to Newton per mm square. So 1 kg force is 9.81 Newton and of course 1 centimeter is um, 10 mm so that becomes it becomes 10 square millimeter square so if you uh, simplify this sir uh, 9.8 uh, divided by 100 uh, so 9.8 divided by 100 9.81 of course 9.81 divided by 100 will be equal to 0 0.0981 0 0.0981 so this is the that means 1 kg force per centimeter square is equal to 0 0.0981 Newton per mm square. Yeah. So this is the conversion factor. Now here since root f is there, I have to take root of this. So root of this will be 0 0.0981 will be, uh, if you take the root of that, you will be getting 0 0.3132. 0 0.3132. Now, in the code he has given here, instead of 658 he has given uh, 2120. So if you multiply the 2120 by 0.3132 or plus 20, you get 658. Similarly, if you multiply this um, 465 by 0.3132, uh, you will be getting 145. So that is how uh, we have to use the formula. Now, even though this formula is not there in the code, it is a transformed formula. So from kg per centimeter <coughs> square to Newton per mm square, uh, if you convert the value of f instead of 2120 you will be having 658 instead of uh, that, uh, 465 you will be having uh, 145 now i am going to use this formula now b is unknown here b is the effective weight this is the unknown so thickness is 5 mm here for this trans portion that is given so is equal to 658 divided by root of 144 so root of 144 of course it is 12 now uh, into 1 minus 145 divided by now w w is the width of the flange portion. Here, what we have to take here is total width is 80. In that, uh, let us deduct. That means we will take the, let us take the center line, uh, center to center. So, center to center, it becomes 75. <coughs> so, W is now 75 divided by T is 5 into root of 144. If you simplify this, uh, you will get 10.66, uh, this value. Therefore, B will be 10.6 into 5, so which comes out to be 53. 0.3 millimeter. So this is the effective width for the flange. The effective width of flange. Okay. Effective width of one flange, of course. Effective width of flange. We are getting 53.3 mm. Taking it as a stiffened element. Now coming to the web. Web is also a stiffened element because both the sides it is supported. So same formula is used here also. Only difference here is this uh, W. So in the case of web bar, uh, how to calculate W is, we have to take this as the uh, W value. Here this becomes, uh, if you calculate total, uh, total depth is uh, width of width of depth, what you can, what you can say, of the web is 250. In that you have to deduct this side also, this side also, that 12.5. Uh, so 12.5 is this. Okay, that we have to deduct. So it becomes a 225 mm. So W becomes 225 mm for the web now. If you substitute and simplify, it is the same formula, you get 40.1. So now, therefore, B will be equal to B for this web portion will be 40.1 into 5, which becomes 200.5. So this 200.5 is the effective width of web. So that means we have computed that, we have computed the effective width of flying. One, one, one side it is 
another side also it becomes 53.3 and for the left bar uh, it is 200.5 200.5 that's what we have computed now let us write down another uh, section where it shows only the effective uh, width portion so here for the left portion effective width is 208.5 for the flanges it is 53.3 and I will take 25 for the lip portion as a conservative design side now if you total overall overall effective depth becomes uh, 208.5 plus 2 times 53.3 plus 2 times 25 into 5 is the thickness so when this effective width uh, B is multiplied by thickness uh, you are going to get the effective area you are going to get 1785.5 mm square you can observe here the fact the gross area of the section is 2080 mm square whereas the effective area is 1785.5 uh, mm square now we will define one uh, 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 parameter called power factor which is denoted by Q as per the code Q is given by Fc by F into A effective by A so Fc and Fc are we are taking equal so into A, A effective is this much 1785.5 divided by A is uh, the gross area 2080. So simplify that, you will get 0.858. Normally, it is always less than 1. So 0.858 is the value of uh, that form factor Q. Now, <coughs> once you get this form factor, now I uh, go to page number 18 of the same code IS 801. So you have a formula for this uh, parameter CC, which is given by root of 2 pi square e by Fy. Now, if you substitute uh, for uh, e and Fy, 2 into 10 power 5 2 party respectively and if you simplify you get the cc coefficient as 128.25 then we have to calculate one more uh, uh, coefficient called cc by root q so all these are available in page number 18 of the code is 8.1 so cc is 128.25 divided by root of 8 point uh, root of 0.858 if you simplify this is 138.45 actually as per the code this is nothing but you are L by R minimum. So L by R minimum means L R in the code is noted as KL. So L and KL they are same the effective length, effective length of that uh, member, the compression member. So this CC by root Q is the same as KL by R minimum or L by R minimum. Now this is how uh, this is how uh, we have to calculate the parameters. Next what we have to do is now we have to for different lengths for different lengths of the member of course with this problem they may give the length of the member as 2 meters or 3 meters or 1 meter or 4 meter now what we have to do is this L by R minimum so we have calculated now from that uh, <coughs> minimum is that is limiting you can take it as limiting L by R uh, uh, limiting like that also you can write so now what we have to do here is we have to compute uh, we have to compute for different uh, lengths of that uh, compression member now i have done here i have taken l as one meter one meter length i have taken so one meter length if i take then what happens here l becomes 1000 millimeter divided by r is minimum minimum radius of dilation 27.39 the ratio becomes 36.51 now this we have to compare with this uh, l by r minimum so if you compare that this value is coming less than this then go to uh, page number 18 you will have a, value, a formula for finding the stress actual stress actual stress in the member of course that depends on the value of this L by R so if L by R is less than L by R minimum then we have to use this formula suppose if L by R is greater than L by R minimum now uh, they are limiting so then FA is used uh, FA is calculated using this formula so both the uh, formula are given in uh, page 18 of the code only now in this case I have to use this formula because this is less than this now the formula is like this FA is equal to 12 by 23 into Q into FY minus 3 into Q FY whole square divided by 23 pi square into K F Y R whole square now all the values you know so 12 by 23 into Q is 0.858 we have calculated here into Fy is 240 minus 3 into so this once again Q into Fy whole square uh, into <coughs> KL by R KL by R we have calculated 36.51 if you take the length as uh, 1 meter divided by 23 pi square into 
e. So all the values are substituted, they have substituted in terms of Newton per m square. So the, if you simplify, we will get the value of actual stress also as a, in Newton per m square as 103.7 Newton per m square, k value. Now the load carrying capacity P, you can say it as P, is given by the effective area multiplied by the actual stress that is going to be induced. So which is given by 178.55 into 103.7 in, in terms of newtons, if you convert in terms of kilonewtons, it becomes 185.16 kilonewtons. So finally what you can say here is for this for this particular channel section in a coarse formed steel structure, as a compression member, if it is used for over a length of 1 meter, its load carrying capacity is 185.16. It gives, it gives an idea about uh, how much load can be applied for over a given uh, length of the compression member for a given channel set, for a given section in a cold form steel. Similar to your hot rolled uh, sections also, only thing is uh, there we are using IS 800 fold for hot rolled sections, whereas for cold form sections, we are using Indian codes of IS 801 and 811. So 811 gives the properties of uh, the different uh, sections and 801 gives uh, the equations and the specifications uh, for the cold form steel design. Now here, uh, depending on this value of L, suppose if you take L is equal to 3 meters, L is equal to 3 meters, then you have to take here 3000 divided by 27.39. So 3000 divided by 27.39, let us calculate that becomes into, is that into 3? So 36.51 into 3, it becomes 109.53. 109.53 is also less than 138.45, then also we have to use the same formula. But what you can observe here is, if you do that, you will get this FTR value slightly less than that. Slightly less than 103.7. That means uh, your uh, load carrying capacity reduces uh, if, you, if you increase the length of the compression number. If you take 5 meters, let us say, if, if uh, KL is 5 meters, then 31.36.51 uh, 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 into 5 times it becomes. So 182.55, which is greater than this, greater than FIR minimum. So in that case, so what happens if we cannot use this formula, we have to use this formula. This is the class which is given in the page 18. We have to use this formula, we have to use we have to calculate the load carrying capacity. So depending on the value of L by R ratio, we have to decide which formula we have to use for calculating the actual stress. When actual stress is calculated, it is multiplied by the effective area of that section. So then we will get the uh, actual load carrying capacity of that particular section over a given length.